one searching check. All right, so you guys search, and what the only thing that you see is remember in the in the the barracks room down here to the south, there's a skeleton, and then there's also there's like a like a dice game that's on the table. So there's that, and there's also we'll say a hundred copper. So I'll put the I'll put the hundred copper in the party sheet i'll also put the uh let's see is it dice yeah there's a dice set i'll also put that into the party sheet as well so that's what you guys have have found basically everything else nothing you found nothing and then as you guys are searching want some you're keeping an eye on on good old wiener noggin and it seems like he's came to and this is probably about about five to six minutes after after you guys finished off that last skeleton, so now Wiener Noggin is back into the into the you know his conscious state. Oh, <laughs> stupid magic! I should have just hit him with my staff. So I I uh, I, I wanna I wanna. Uh, tell these guys some interesting things. So uh, sure. while I was trapped and in the fate, I, I had a vision. And the vision was this whole castle. Uh, I, I saw back in time, peeled away the history, and I saw the, uh, the queen uh, running with some of her guards um, out across the land while the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 Battle for the, the castle was yep. taken care of. Yeah, and ultimately the Orlesians uh, ended up snagging some pretty sweet uh, swords. Uh, uh, so, uh, anyway, I I, I want to just convey that. Sort of like a, a travel back in time. All right, yeah, so, yeah, it was really awesome. Right before I threw up. Yeah. I'll, I'll pat his head with a cold cloth and I'll be like, delusions, my friends. Mere delusions. You're so sweet. <laughs> You've been seeing things in the fade. <laughs> so sweet. So as as you guys are congregated down here at the skeleton, both pickaxe, pickaxe Pete and Valos, yeah, this thing is, this, this short sword is driven probably six to eight inches into the wall holding the skeleton up. And on the end of the hilt of the sword, there's this peach piece of parchment that's kind of kind of rolled up. So yeah, I'd like to, to read what's on there. Uh, sure. Is there anything special about this sword? Uh, no, nothing looks. It, it's it's like a uh, it's like one of the other broken short swords. It's kind of lying around this this floor. It's all, all heavily pitted and stuff. So yeah, I'll as What's it say, my old friend? Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and share this with you. And the parchment, as you unroll it, it says, To those who survive, as Queen Moria commanded, I led a sortie against the Orlesians who came to kill her and so to end the rebellion. By Androst, we bloodied them. When the Chevaliers flanked us, I had to order the retreat to the tower. Here we will make our stand. Long live Ferelden, Sir Victor Greenthorn. Huh. Yeah, so what do you guys think about that? Say, What's a sorty? <clears throat> uh, That's so what you call a sword. <laughs> uh, it's it's like a uh, he led some troops to make a stand against the Orlesians that came to kill the queen. And, and you guys are starting to put two and two together. And what do you guys think? You know, especially with what what Wiener Noggin just told you that he's seen in his his dream, like when he was in his dream state. Well, so did these um, zombies? Did they get their times confused? <laughs> go out, see the Orlesians, and you know, took their revenge. Maybe. <clears throat> Well, you know, or the retreat. 
brought them here, brought the tower here when they retreated. Yeah, that's what Sir happen. Victor says in the on the parchment. You know, he retreated to the tower, and he said, "Here we'll make our stand." Right, but he led a sortie against the Orlesians, and we got a bunch of dead Orlesians. Yeah. Over at the Clint's booth. Yep, because the Orlesian. Time, of course, but, yeah. And, you know, they're still French. I mean, Orlesians. <laughs> they're still French. Uh, they got the beady heads like Terrence and Phillips from South Park. Oh, no, wait, that's the Canadians. Sorry. That's Canadian. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys can keep the parchment. And, you know, that's a, it's a pretty good clue. Honestly, it's a pretty good clue. Let's see what's what's upstairs. Okay. Sure. And, uh, I'll start this meeting up the stairs. All right. So you guys travel up to the second floor, and this is what you guys see. As as I'm gonna kind of oops, that's that's not good. I forgot to uh, forgot to set a grid to the map. Duh. Damn there it, we go. Dave. I know. I'm such a, I'm such a rookie. My first time using a virtual tabletop, so. Plus that they got great handwriting back then, Dave. There we go. Hmm. All right, so I want to get a 50 grade here, and I keep doing 51. I don't know if it's uh. There we go. All right, so we're good. So let me go ahead and share this image with you guys. This is uh, as you guys make your way up the circular stairwell. You guys are now on floor two. And here's, in fact, I could have just taken everybody and put them down at one time. But of course, I I choose to, you know, put all the tokens on there individually, like a knucklehead. All right, so you guys are on the, you guys are now on the second floor of this tower. And you can see that the stairwell goes up to another, another level of the tower. And as you enter, there's a couple of doors to the north and to the south, a total of three doors. So what say you, adventurers, well, will, aspiring Grey Wardens? I will listen at uh, this door to the north here. If I don't hear anything, just open it. All right. Uh, you do not hear anything. I will even save you the, the check. You mean at the, the double door where you're at, right? Okay, you open the door. Yay, yeah, nay, open the yes, door. Yes, okay, open the door. all right, so you open the door. It looks like there is another set of barracks. But a lot of the, you notice that a lot of the, the bunks here on this floor are all broken up and shattered. You know, same thing, she, splintered shields with, you know, Ferelden. Uh, you know, markers, and there's broken weapons also, some broken bows, swords, and stuff. I'll go ahead and, and rifle through this room and see if I can find them. Okay. Uh, so as you... Okay, so you're going to go in a right... I love how you say it. I'm just going to rifle the room. So as you get to about, about right here, and you're in, you know, the full vicinity of the room, it looks like that there is... Something a little weird here because all of the walls are scorched black. And you can't, there's no, there's no smell of fire or ash or cinder or anything like that. And there's dust everywhere. I mean, there's probably decades worth of dust in here. And as you take a step in, you're like, hmm. But when you start looking around, as you are just fixing to step on the floorboard, in front of you, you notice that there is a large pressure plate on the floor. And you just as you're fixing your step, you're like, oh crap. And you move your foot black. You move your foot back. Because all of the walls are that's it. That was a hell of a perception check, dude. You totally just got so lucky. <laughs> but it looks like looks like there's a trap, Valos. Alright, I'll have Wiener Nog on uh <clears throat> So what do you think? You see all these, you know, all of all of the walls are scorched black. You see this pressure plate that's on the floor. What do you think is going on here? 
Well, I am. Um, is it just the one pressure plate? Now that I know what I'm looking for. One big pressure plate. It takes up like 10 feet. Oh, okay. Okay. And they did a great job hiding it also. I will say oh. that. It looks like the it looks like the floor, honestly. But it's just got that little raise on it. Is there a way to go around it, or is it is it kind of blocking? blocking you th around? you can definitely go around it, but you know if you have any kind of skill and traps with the dexterity ability focus dexterity traps, you you, you could probably know. yeah that maybe that be something that you could buy later on. But yeah, you know that traps can be disabled, so. Well, I don't have any, like, uh, any wedges. You don't have any or tools or anything like that? Yeah. But yeah, so I, I, let me draw a square for you. Hey, speaking good. of disabled, let's pick out peaks, Dylan. And uh, keep searching the room. Okay, of course, so. if anyone comes in after me, I'll tell them not to. Yeah, so. So it's about it's about this size, man. I mean, just as you're fixing to take that step, you're like, oh, whoa, wait a minute here. So yeah, you can skirt around the, if you're careful, I'm not gonna make you do any checks, you can jump across that corner by the, by the door and you can skirt around and, and search the room if you want to. I will do that. <laughs> and Holger just barges right on in. <laughs> no, somebody, Possess my token. <laughs> yeah. that, that was not me. I figure that. Wasn't one of them, right? <laughs> yeah, he's it's only laughing up there. Around. No. All right, so give me a. Right, I'll, I'll search the room. Yeah, sure. Give me one more search check. What What is everybody else doing as uh, Valos is checking out the the room to the to the north? I'll yell in there and be like, "Valos, are you okay? Everything all right?" Yeah, there's. This room's trapped, though, so don't uh, be careful. We are not going to go help one him. The other room. Go All help right, him. But my there. dexterity sucks. <laughs> How about your, how's your perception score? So yeah, you see that, uh, and I'm sure Val also pointed out as you go into the room, Wiener Noggin. So he, yeah, he's, he's like, hey! You know? Indiana Jones thing where he like sprinkles the dirt on it. So it'll, <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah, I see it. There's a raised floor and it's totally <laughs> black. My guess is a goth lives here and they painted the walls black. That's My Chemical awesome. Romance holds yeah. concerts here. Yeah, My Chemical Romance holds <laughs> concerts. So. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there was a, this trap uh, set something off, and it just burned everything. <laughs> I say you. I say we roll something on it. Mm -hmm. After I leave the room, you're welcome to do that. That's All right, but I want to roll Gax Pete on it. That's the problem. The two of you should should like falsely mark the spot like one foot away, so that <laughs> somebody will like jump and land in it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> It's it's right there. He takes a step, and it's a foot back. Uh, Dave, I'm going to open this door over here by the sure. stairwell. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check as you open up the door. And uh, also, Valos, really quickly, can you give me a D a D10? No, just a D10. I know D10s aren't in this game, but uh, all right. Oh wow. So very nice. All right, so you are, hmm, let's see. Let's see. All right, I'll get back to you in just a second, okay? I'll get back to you in just a second, because you found something hidden behind some old books that basically turned into dust as you picked them up. You found something hiding behind some books. So I'll get back to you in just just a second. Okay. Okay. So pickaxe, Pete, you're the one that wanted to open up the door to the south, or was it uh, was it Holgram? Wantsum, uh, Wantsum. Oh, you well, no, okay. Upstairs. Yeah, I want to take my axe and just uh, pound on the door a little bit, knock on. Okay, so. You knock on the door, nobody answers. Nobody says, hello, nobody. come on in. Yeah, nobody says that. <laughs> All right, I uh, open the door. Okay, you open the door, and it's actually a, a fairly large room. It looks like uh, these are barracks as well. 
Actually, a rather large barracks room. And there's a piano that's sitting in the corner. So give me a perception check as you're moving into the room there, pickaxe feet. All right. So what else are you doing there, uh, pickaxe feet? Well, I'm going to look around and see if, if there's nobody there. Uh, just, Nobody's in the room. Um, no skeletons? Nobody? Mm -mm, um, no. <clears throat> sure. I will say this. As you are inside of this room, you notice, oh, and, and as you move in, all of a sudden, when you take a step, you hear a click, and all of a sudden, you are just engulfed in fire. And this, the whole castle, as this happens, everybody, and, and as you're going up the stairs, you almost kind of fall down back into the, the level, because you're just not expecting it and the whole castle rumbles and you know a bunch of stones kind of fall off of the ceiling and a bunch of dust and so let me let me get you a little bit of damage here so you're going to take a total of 15 damage pickaxe pete minus your armor so you're going to take a total of 11 damage so yeah you are definitely is this magical rock yeah, yeah. Magical what kind of magical resistance uh, do you plus have two Okay, it's it's fire, so it's uh, but no, it's it's definitely not magical, definitely not. So yeah, there's a uh, yeah, and and as you're kind of like shaking the cobwebs, you're like, holy crap, you stepped on a pressure plate. So it's definitely a mechanical trap. It's not a, it's not a, uh, you know, not a uh, magical trap. But in this room, there's eight statues that are lining the the wall that's in front of you. So on this wall here, there's a total of eight statues. And there's a table sort of in the, in the corner that, and in fact, we'll say that this thing right here is a, is a little table. Okay. This thing. And on that table there, there were some, there's smoldering pillows. Now they were like a uh, decorative pillows and they're smoldering from the fire. But sitting on top of those pillows were four beautiful steel crowns. And they were, you know, they were on velvet pillows, but now the velvet pillows are basically scorched. And, but the crowns are still there. The crowns didn't melt. And well, like I said, I made my mark in this room. <laughs> there's eight statues on the south wall also. And all of the statues are of a woman. The same woman, but different different kind of stances and poses. Eight statues, table with a uh, smoldering velvet, velvet pillows and crowns. Okay, am I still on fire? Is this constant? No, you're kind of pat patting yourself out. No, you've 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 done the old stop, drop, and roll. You know what I mean? From the beards a couple inches shorter. <laughs> oh, ooh, would that be a check? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, then mm. uh, I think I'm going to exit the room. Okay. Sounds good. You exit the room and, and everybody, you know, you guys can see good old pickaxe Pete coming out of the room and he's kind of... What the hell happened in there? <laughs> yeah. I took the wrong step. <laughs> I said watch out for traps. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, I rode the short bus. You know that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we're going to need the smart guys over here um, when we get done. I, 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 That's definitely not me or the other short guy. So. Mm. To get back to you, right. Valos. Sorry about that. I'll get to you in just a second, Lance. So this item that you had found... After, you know, the tower you thought was going to crumble all around you, you find a beautiful silver mace. And this thing has withstood the stand of time. This, this thing is beautiful. There's all kinds of dwarvish script. And you can tell. It's like, it's like looking at a language on paper. Oh, this looks like it's Russian or this looks like it's French or this looks like it's Spanish. Well, you can look at this and you can see dwarven inscriptions on it 
but you can definitely you, you definitely sense that this this item could be magical just because it's stood at the same of time and there's no no rust or you know the leather grip is beautiful still i mean it's a, it's a beautiful dwarvish silver mace and i'll put that into the i'll put that into the party sheet as well and then you can yeah and yeah the party sheet so uh, okay, or you can you can keep it if you want to. You can no, I, I I'm just doing that for simplicity's sake. But no, I I will I will not I will not swipe this one. I can't use it. So no. um, I'll I'll bring it out to the other dwarves and I'll, I'll look at them and and then I'll look at the one that's not smoking and say, hey, can you read this? Uh, sure, <laughs> let me see it. <laughs> So yeah, as you take a look at it, you can definitely understand the dwarvish language. And this this mace is called Shaper It's Blessing. And basically all the runes and kind of a kind of have a little story. And these this this item was made by the dwarves of the Great Plains to preserve dwarvish history. So whenever whenever you use this mace if you're you know if you're if you have this mace you are very influential to other dwarves basically so anytime that you know speaking mechanically here not game yeah you'll get a plus four to all communication test with dwarves which is a plus four is a huge bonus in this game so but yeah this is a it's a melee weapon it's bludgeoning group Damage is 2d6 plus 1. Uh, it also has a magical bonus of plus 1 as well. And you have to have a minimum strength of uh, 17 to use it. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you have to have a negative 1 strength. So, but I don't think anybody here has a negative 1. So, but yeah, this is called Shaper It's Blessing. Uh, it is magical. And, it, and if you don't have the focus, uh, well communication basically you get plus four to all checks with dwarves that you're trying to influence so so i'll pass that information along to valos i'll hand him back the mace and say um Hi. and we can talk about who gets this later yeah but i let him know what i know about it very good all right that sounds good I'll all right okay so I added that into the party sheet as well. So you guys have that. Dice, Illyrian Potion, and the Rune of Devastation. Okay, so now you have this room down to the south that has four crowns on a table, eight statues. Uh, are you guys going to basically be looking at the rest of the floor as well? Uh, yeah, so I'll go in there, and this, I, I kind of know what I'm looking for as far as pressure plates go. It's obvious. You see it. There. Yeah, it 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 basically uh, fills up these six, these six uh, floor spaces. Basically, it's like a fifteen by fifteen foot pressure plate, and it's just like the other room to the north. You can kind of skirt around it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll skirt around it, and then I head over and investigate those crowns. Okay. So yeah, you guys can get in there and, and uh, search around also. But on the crowns, it, you know, you're, it doesn't look like there's any traps or anything. You know, the plus the the nice velvet red velvet pillows they were kind of smoldering a little bit still. But as you look at the crowns, you notice there's an inscription on every single crown on the inside, and the inscription is the good monarch and I'll, I'll put that into the the chat it's the good monarch that is inscribed three words that are inscribed on every single crown and it, and like i said the statues the eight statues are of a woman right so i will uh 
I'll kind of collect these up, and uh, I'll put one on my head, and I'll spare the other three. Sure. And uh, I want to go over to the statues, and I'm thinking that, that maybe these go on the statues or activate something. Uh, yeah, you look at the statues, and there is actually on on the uh, the female's head, there's like a sort of like an indention to where, yeah, it looks like crowns will sit on the eight statues. Hey, this, by the way, this uh, statue is the same queen from my vision. Yeah. So, so queen, remember Queen Moria you, on the handout. That just queen Moria. proves you I wasn't, uh, I wasn't lying. Unless I'm lying about this too. Yeah. Don't try the magic stuff anymore until you've been trained. Well, I, I guarantee you, this this is it. She looks really familiar, and then you notice the indentions in her head. Since this is the queen from my vision, I guarantee she had this big uh, crown in my vision. I guarantee you, we have to get a crown, put it on that chick's head, and it's going to unlock something awful. So you uh, notice. I'll take one of the crowns and plink. <clears throat> sure. Before you plank the crown on there, you you can <laughs> see that there are. But I mean, you sure you plank the crown on crown on there and it sits on there. Nothing happens. It doesn't blow up or anything. Just to kind of give you that, because uh, I interrupted you. But you notice that on the bottom of every one of these statues, there is a plate, and there's Does a word. Say Andy. It does. <clears throat> There's a word, a single word, inscribed into every one of these plates on the bottom of the statue. And there's eight words. Beautatious, compassionate, glorious, mighty, righteous, steadfast, whimsical, and wise. And I'm also going to put these into the chat as well. So you have four crowns, obviously since you've put one of the crowns on the wise statue, which was the last statue where you're standing on the map. Yeah, it looks like maybe these four crowns are, I mean, what do you guys think? There's four crowns that, you know, it says the good monarch. It and uh, else, right? Just the good monarch. Yeah, those are the words that are inscribed on the crowns. Yeah, yeah. Those are the words that are inscribed on the crowns. And then, like I said, the plates on the bottom of the statues are beautatious, compassionate, glorious, mighty, righteous, steadfast, whimsical, and wise. So what do you guys think all of this means? Obviously, well, I mean, obviously it's a puzzle. We're gonna get the, yeah, we're going to get the uh, crowns <clears throat> and match them to the crowns. That we're going to match them to the same. Yeah. At, I mean, yeah, there's some pretty good clues for you. So why don't we go ahead and, seeing that it's a, a little after 6 o'clock and you guys are fixing to have dinner and stuff, let's go ahead and end it here. And we'll come back next week and continue on as both Wiener Noggin and Valus that are inside of the room along with uh, Holgren, you guys are looking at these plates, you're looking at the crown, and you guys maybe need to put the crowns on the statue's heads. I mean, you guys have already stated that, so. I wonder what four crowns go on what four statues. I guess we'll find out next week. So, good game, everybody, and congratulations, because all of you are now level two. So... Don't forget to look at your character sheet and your class, because remember, I've basically told you everything on your character sheet, what you guys get for every single level. So don't forget, you get to, you get to upgrade one of your primary uh, attributes, so you can beef up fighting if you want to, you can beef up intelligence or whatever. You get a an ability score focus that you get to choose, so if you want to get thieves, if you want to get locks or you know or traps or perception seeing you could you can take a focus for your primary abilities and then you may get some class features don't forget you get more mana if you're casting spells or spell points you get more hit points 
So everything is on your character sheet. And I'm going to leave the game up for the rest of the night so you guys can work on your character sheets. So, all right, everybody, great game. And uh, everybody good to go for next week? I hope to be ready to go next week, uh, just in case work gets uh, busy. I've already kind of mentioned that to you guys. So, But thanks. Great game, and congrats on level two, and we'll, uh, we'll continue on for next time. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Totally appreciate it. I'm going to hang around yes. for a couple of minutes. Good game, so, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and – Leave the call, and if you guys want to stay here and chat about the statues or whatever, feel free to. And like I said, I've got the, I've also got the, uh, the game open for you as well. So have a good time, guys. I'll see you guys next week. All right. Later, Dave. Thanks, right. man. Later, everybody. Had fun. It's been awesome. It's so nice to be playing again. <laughs>